respected chairperson, principal, and all the worshippers here this morning, I greet each and every one of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to thank Atimuala and Abu Peter for giving me this privilege to share a simple message with LDC worshippers. I'm also happy to see Atuli and Tamjan. I'm missing both of you. Thank you, Atuli, for your wonderful introduction. This morning, I want to share the topic called Your Body is the Temple of the Holy Spirit. And I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at the price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Basing on this Bible verse, I want to share a simple message for all of us. We live in a body-conscious world. We buy many products to clean up, to paint up, and to fix up. We have great concern about our diets. We are talking about cholesterol, high blood pressure, low diets, and we are talking about yoga centers and exercise. All of us are very conscious about our physical body. When we become Christian, the Christian is another dimension to concern for the body. The day you and I become a Christian, something, our body belongs to God and our body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. When we speak of the temple, we are often referring to the building where we meet. However, this building is not a church, it is a place where the church gathers. The church is that universal mystical body made up of every person who has trust in Jesus by faith. The building is not the temple, the building is not the sanctuary, but you are the sanctuary of God. The word of God it's very clear here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, refers not to a place of the temple, but just to the Holy of Holies, the place where God dwells. What Paul is trying to tell us is that we are the dwelling place of God. We are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. If we look at the background of the book of 1 Corinthians, we know that in the city of Gorin, there was a temple called the Temple of Goddess Diana. Diana was a goddess of sex and love. And there were about 1,000 priestesses in her temple. In reality, they were nothing more than prostitutes. Because to worship Diana, one had to have sex with those temple priestesses. It appears that in those days, many were using their bodies for immoral purposes and they were defiling the temples. The Greeks always looked down on the body, especially philosopher Epictetus said, I am a poor soul shackled to a corpse, since the body was of no importance, you could do what you liked with your body. To those people, Apostle Paul wrote, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the temple of God, we remember the temple in the Old Testament. We have the tabernacle of Moses and the tabernacle of David, but I will not talk about them this morning. But I want to lead all of you to go back to see the temple of Solomon here in Second Chronicles chapter 3 and 1 Kings chapter 6. The temple of Solomon was a house of, was a picture of prosperity and prominence. Of all the structures, 
Solomon's temple was a glorious edifice. It was inlaid with ivory and gold. Kings from all over the world came to see and wonder at the great building that Solomon had made. The temple represented God's presence with his people. The temple represented stability and power of God. When Solomon dedicated the temple and prayed, we all know that fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. When God gave his plans for the temple, he demanded purity in the materials and construction. Otherwise, he would not fill it with his glory. God will not fill a dirty temple. We find it in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1 following. I want to focus on this concept of Christians being the temple of God, and I'd like to draw some comparisons between the temple of Jerusalem and our bodies as the temple of the Holy Spirit. First of all, the Temple of Jerusalem was a place of dedication. The earthly temple was a place wholly dedicated to God and His glory. Nothing that defiled was allowed on the grounds. When something went wrong, when something wrong occurred, God took immediate steps to take care of the situation. The earthly temple of Jerusalem was a place set apart for God and His glory. On the other hand, these worldly bodies that we dwell in are also set apart for His glory because we have been bought with a price, the blood of Jesus Christ. Regardless of what we are doing, if this body does not bring glory and honor to God, it is sin. We find it clearly in Romans chapter 14, verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Dear friends, let nothing defile your body. Dedicate it for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Number two. The Temple of Jerusalem was a place of devotion. People gathered to worship God and glorify God. It was a place where songs were sung, prayers were prayed, hands were lifted up, praise and worship was done, and God was magnified. We find it in Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. Just as the temple was devoted to God as a place of worship, these bodies are to be places where God is worshipped. The Corinthian believers acknowledge Jesus Christ with their mouth, but their bodies prostituted themselves in the worship of God's appetite. If we read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 15, you will clearly find it. The question may arise, how can I worship God with my body? And the answers are many, but here are few. Let us sacrifice this physical body as a living sacrifice, just as it is said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Let us prostrate our body in prayer, just like Daniel. Let us practice the presence of the Holy Spirit just as it is written in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let us praise Him continually with our mouth, with our actions, with everything, with our whole body. Let us praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, the temple of Jerusalem was a place of duty. In the Jerusalem temple, they did sacrifice, they collected tithes and offerings, they prayed for the sick and the needy people, everybody, the priest, the sanctuary choir, 
the wood cutters, the water carriers, and all of them, they really worked hard. Everybody, there were priests praying for people, and then every one of them worked very hard. This body must also carry duties as servants for God. For example, Apostle Paul wrote scriptures, preached the word of God, consulted, and also made dance, which means we must work hard. We are duty bound before God. All of us, the servants of God, Christians, should work hard. Faith and work should go hand in hand. Let us all learn. Let us all rededicate ourselves to work hard. Hallelujah. Number four. The temple of Jerusalem was a place of death. That old temple in Jerusalem was a scene of many deaths. Thousands and thousands of animals were taken there to slain on the altars in obedience to God's commands. There was stench of death at the backyard of the Temple of Jerusalem. Like it or not, you and I are challenged to be dead to certain things in this world. We are expected to be dead to our all way of life. We are the both of fornication, impurity of thought, inordinate affections like evil desires and passion, evil lust, covetousness, greed, lust, should be put to death every day. That is why Apostle Paul said, I die daily in First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 31. He also said, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. God does not want us to kill ourselves, but God demands the death of bodily desires. If you read First Peter chapter 1, verse 23, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 9, you will know about it very clearly. Let us kill our evil thoughts. Let us kill our evil mind. Let us kill our bad mouth. And let us always pray. Let us cover our mind, our emotion, our body with the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Number five. The temple was a place of display. When people saw the Jerusalem building standing there, they were reminded of God's glory. The temple in Jerusalem was covered over with gold. It stood on the highest hill in the city facing east. Every morning when the sun broke over the horizon, it cast its light onto the great golden structure and literally blessed in the glory of the sun. Perhaps the sin was the reference point for Jesus Christ in Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 5 verse 40. Day and night, the temple of God was always alight with the glory of God. We are to be such reflectors of the glory of God that others see His power working in and through our lives. We are to be bright, shining examples of God's saving power. Whether you like it or not, you are a witness a city and a hill you can hide. Your life speaks. Let the fire of God display in your body. Let the glory of the Lord display through your body. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number five. The temple of Jerusalem was a place of fragrance. Solomon built the temple. He lined its interior walls with cedar boards, paneling them from the floor to the ceiling. Everything was cedar. 
we find it in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 14 to 18. The perfume, the fragrance of cedar is well known. It can be smelled even far away from 300 kilometers during windy season from Mount Lebanon. When the worshippers came out of Jerusalem temple, it was said that the passers-by would ask, Have you been to worship? And when the worshippers asked them back, How can you know? How can you tell that we went to worship? The passers-by would say, We can smell the fragrance. Hallelujah, I love that. We can smell the aroma. The fragrance of cedar was saturated. The fragrance of cedar saturated their body and their clothes, and even the passers-by could smell that sweet fragrance. What do people smell in your temple, in your body? Are you producing the spiritual fragrance of humility, contentment, positive language, happiness, joy, and smiles, or are you producing bad smell? Let us check once again whether we are producing sweet fragrance of the Holy Spirit or we are not producing any sweet aroma from our life. In conclusion, let me remind you with one more advice. I like it very much. When Solomon built the temple, no sound of hammer. Look at this first Kings chapter six verse seven. After we finish this worship, you open this first Kings chapter six verse seven and read it and memorize it and keep it in your mind. Here it is written, No sound of hammer, chisel, or any other iron doll was heard at the temple site while it was being built. Hallelujah. As you are building your body to be the spiritual temple, check yourself whether some bad sounds are coming out or not. I wonder how they could make a magnificent temple without the sound of hammer or chisel. When God is hammering and chiseling you, don't complain. Criticism, complain, quarreling, fighting, jealousy, all these are bad sounds. Do not allow any bad sounds to be heard by others, but allow your temple where the Holy Spirit will always dwell. Sanctify your body to welcome Holy Spirit. The Lord asks, Where will my resting place be? The Lord is searching for a resting place. Let His resting place be your body be your heart. Finally, promote the purpose of God through your body by praying, preaching, admonishing, and witnessing. Today, in this age of grace, God is not longing for Solomon's temple, but God desires to dwell in your body, and He wants to perform miracles through your body. Make your body a living Make your body a living sanctuary for the Holy Spirit. Always invite Holy Spirit into your body, into your life, and let us continue to serve the Lord and glorify God. May the good Lord bless each and every one of you. Praise the Lord. Shall we close our eyes and look to God in prayer? Father, we want to thank you and praise you for our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, anoint each and every one of them right now with the Holy Spirit. Anoint them afresh. Fill them with your discernment. Fill them with your fire. Fill them with spiritual gifts and talents. And fill them with nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, as it is written in Colossians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Use them mightily for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord.